Welcome back to an FNA, and today I want to talk about how to not be a jerk. <laughs> because imagine you are an artist that changed the industry, that did something revolutionary and really cool and really awesome, inspired a bunch of artists generation after generation to get into that field and to aspire to be that good and that inspiring to other people. And imagine that you can choose between, as you get older, as an artist, to maybe teach and inspire more people and explain things and just kind of inspire again a new generation with your own knowledge and guide them into their future. Or you just become bitter and spend your time commenting on LinkedIn how crappy those artists are whenever they animate the same thing that you did years ago. So these are the two paths you could take. There are many other paths you could take, but some people do that and uh, yeah, that's not very nice. And I understand, as you get older, you might get bitter, you might get irrelevant, you might see people do other things that you wish you could do, but you still have a choice to just not comment. Just be quiet and just let people be and let people enjoy things. But anyway, what am I really talking about? I'm talking about the invisible resume. Now, in his case, it's fairly visible resume, but clearly he also doesn't care. Bonus points if you know who I mean. But the invisible resume is something that starts very early on, even as a student. I teach a bunch of students and I have for you know years now, and I've seen quite the range of student behavior, how to take critiques, how they interact with other students or with the teacher in class. And this goes from very appreciative and positive and inspired and hardworking to not saying anything, being super lazy, and then even complaining uh, to upper management and stuff like that. I've seen it all. Same thing at work. You have sometimes coworkers that go behind your back to talk talk crap about you to their supervisor on the same show so that your review looks bad. You have people that just behave in a not so nice way during work. You have people that claim things that they didn't really do and then they prop themselves up. There are people who don't animate at work. They just online gamble. And then when it's time for dailies, they grab someone else's work, copy paste, tweak a little bit and pretend that it's their own. Trust me, I've seen it all. I've experienced a lot. And the main thing is that you could offset it with being a really good animator. And I know cases where they're really good and they're really big jerks. And that can compensate and balance out for a little bit until it doesn't. It might get you far, but at the end, it still all falls apart. People will not want to work with you. People don't want to crew you on the shows. People don't want to hire you when you want to switch companies. And like I said, this starts early, even as a student. And that doesn't mean that you have to be fake nice, where like everything is great and just pretend and be nice to everybody, even though you hate them and you can see it in the comments. You can always kind of tell. The thing is, it's a very small industry and chances are you're going to meet your fellow students at work, either at the same company or you work with them where maybe they are your boss later on or you are their boss. It's just, it's a small industry. Everybody knows everybody. Word travels and it's not like, oh, this person, I don't like them just because maybe you're threatened by their skills and then you remember their name and you make a list and you try to ruin their careers. That I have never experienced and I've never heard. I'm sure it happens too, because trust me, they're jerks everywhere and they come in all shapes and sizes. But generally it's about your behavior within a team within one-on-one -on -one interactions. It's just, you got to make sure that it's not just your technical skills, your animation skills, your demo reel, that's good, but also how you behave within a team to other people with production staff. And there's a difference between a show that goes well and a show that's on the crunch and heavy stress. Tempers flare, you got to be able to navigate that and still be professional, be polite, and just be respectful while you do your work. And it's not like this is an FNA with a tutorial of do this, this, and this to not be a jerk. Like this should be normal. <laughs> But clearly sometimes it's not. But at least the advice I can give you is that if you get into a situation where something is stressful or you did everything right, but then the person may be critiquing you, your supervisor, your teacher, or a coworker or something, and you've, you're feeling that they're butting heads, something's going on, it's just not going to be a good thing when you just fight back. Because ultimately it's just going to harm you. Because you did everything okay, let them dig their own grave, don't get to a shouting match, don't write back angry emails while, you're, you know, while your emotions are high, just let it roll off your back, take it a minute, reevaluate the situation and just move forward. And this is within a student-student relationship, a student-teacher, a professional at work, towards co-workers, towards productions, towards supervisors. And you're going to get into those situations because, you know, you're also dealing with creative people, bigger egos, 
Yeah, something's gonna happen. But ultimately what people are going to remember is that you were great to work with. And it's better that your level is okay in terms of animation quality. And this is across all industries. But again, I'm speaking in terms of animation. Like animation is good, not awesome, but good. But you're awesome. You're easy to work with. You're just friendly. You take feedback, you know, in a positive way. You incorporate your own notes. Just you're just you just there's a big difference between someone you want to work with and someone that you just go, oh, I don't want to interact with that person. And you might be really, really good animator, but your attitude is crap. That's just not going to get you far. It will get you to a certain level. But like I said before, the house of cards is going to fall apart at one point. And if you really have something to say, say it in private. It's always better that when anything happens, let's say you're in dailies, right? Or you're in a classroom. Take some notes, like why, why did this person say this to me like that? Why did that and that happen? Take some notes, wait, and then email or contact them privately afterwards. This could be one-on-one -on -one at work, separately in private. This could be an email to the teacher, anything. Because you never know what the other person is going through either, right? You might feel something like, that guy's a jerk, why did he say that? But maybe that person just got really, really bad news today and it's just in a really bad space where generally they're okay, but today's a bad day and unfortunately they took it out on you. That's not great, don't do that either, but it can happen. But if you take this privately and you go through a discussion, you realize, oh, this is why it happens and everybody's in the clear again, it's gonna be okay. Don't go behind that person's back to management, complain, like there are other ways you can do things before you escalate this to management and HR and so on. Not saying you should excuse bad behavior, but you gotta look at the context and where this person is coming from, what's going on, and also pick your battle. Obviously there are levels to this, there's a certain level of harassment and horrible behavior that needs to be reported, of course. I'm talking about the lower level, like the one-on-one -on -one stuff, the creative disputes and some of the ego stuff, or if you see someone commenting online on LinkedIn being a jerk all the time. But there is a level of difference in terms of, you know, how jerky a person is and how far you need to go in terms of escalating and and dealing with this problem. And after almost 20 years, and I'm including being a student, it's like almost 20 years I've been animating, you know, dealing with students and uh, fellow classmates, basically, right? Getting into the first job. Well, I only have two jobs by now. But, you know, seeing a lot of people coming out of companies, dealing with a lot of people, it's just, you immediately can tell when someone's a jerk or not. And there's a huge difference when you are in a team with multiple jerks versus in a team where just everybody's awesome. It's just the flow is different. The, the level of enthusiasm for the project is different. It's just everything flows differently. And again, not that it's like, you know, specific tutorial, but you know, you always have a choice. And if you feel like, I, I didn't have a choice, I was just, I was angry, just at least practice to just breathe take a step back, wait, examine the situation, and then deal with it the next day. Just to really see, is that really this important? But this is why I'm saying, pick your battles, kind of evaluate the situation and the context and see what you can do. Just as a, as a whole, just don't be a jerk. <laughs> It's not worth it. This industry is small. People talk. We know who you are. We're travels. It's just that invisible resume is really important. And at one point, it is going to be a deciding factor for people's hiring decisions, despite your reel. Again, your reel can be top notch, but if you're a jerk versus you're awesome, like that can be the deciding thing. Black like this airplane flying close by. So just take that, take that gem and something happens, let it fly by. Wait a minute and reevaluate. Trust me, the invisible resume is super important and it follows you everywhere. This Again, like I said, this could be a student, this could be at work, this could be online. How you interact with people on Twitter, on I don't know, Instagram, wherever you are. Like, you know, if you trash other people's work publicly, your coworkers, eh, it's not a, not a good look because usually there's a reason why something doesn't look good. If you've been in the industry, you know why a shot doesn't look good. It's not because people suck and everybody wants Wanted to do bad work. There are always so many factors that come together into something that makes a shot not look as good as you want it to be, and other people will see that. But there's always a reason. And for me at this point, if I see a movie and I don't like it, and I used to be like this. I even perched a bunch of comments on my Twitter where like, eh, man, I didn't like that movie. And after all this time, like, I don't know, do I need to say this? People work really hard. Even if the movie sucks at the end, people still worked hard. So then they write me and didn't like that movie. I don't know, especially if it's co-workers, it's just, it's just not, it's not the right thing to do. Right? Maybe that's just me, I don't know. So for me, it's like if I see something I don't like, I just don't say anything. I prefer to take the five minutes instead of bashing someone to find something that I like and then amplify that, retweet that person, look at that awesome work. That to me is a better usage of time than going on to all the way back to what I said at the beginning, trolling LinkedIn and finding people who do what you used to do and just constantly saying, this is sucks, who are you? This is irrelevant, blah, 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 blah. Why? Why, why be that bitter? I don't know. But that's that person's problem, and I'm gonna leave it at that. So, different kind of FNA, not a tutorial and a demo in my, just basically it's an attitude thing. Don't be a jerk. Think about your invisible resume. And just on the human level, why? Why be a jerk? 
it's not needed. The, the world is not going to be a better place if you do that. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that short and sweet. It's not that short. I mean, it wasn't that sweet. <laughs> But it's a little reality check again for students, you know, because I have a semester starting in a week and that's something I want to talk to them as well. Like you have to start being a professional from the very beginning, even in class, how you take critiques, how you submit something, how you interact. It's just you want to make sure that you're a professional, not just on your reel, but as a human being interacting with other artists. It's just that's the bottom line. I'm sure other people have other thoughts about that or maybe they've experienced some of those same things. I would, well, I don't know, leave comments. I know people want to, you know, comment and get all angry and do stuff. But anyway, I'll leave it that. That's it for the clip. It's it's a, maybe a different kind of clip, but I think it's something important to know and you're going to deal with people like that. And hopefully that interaction is going to be OK with you. And hopefully you're not going to become one of those bitter jerks. And that's it. That's for the clip. If you're still watching and uh, you've been listening to this advice slash rant, then thank you till the very end. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in my next clip.